Ben Askren joins the show. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well. How about you guys? What's up, Ben? How you doing, buddy? Bisping here. You know, we were just having a little trip down memory lane. Our producer here was just pulling up some old tweets of me and you going back and forth, uh, back and forth, back in the day. Well, you know, that's one of my favorite things to do is just you know harass people on Twitter. It's actually quite entertaining. <laughs> no, absolutely, because we were talking about it, and I'm like, I don't even know what it was about, but I said I think we talked some shit back and forth, but it was just you know. I don't know what was it about. It was about uh, Alan Belcher. You were just trying to set up a fight between those guys, you oh. know, which I'll yeah. just point out. You know, yeah. I wouldn't convincingly, but it's all good, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> So Ben, how's it going, man? How's uh, how's life been treating you lately? Good, everything's good. I'm busy. Uh, I just finished, I finished training a little bit ago. Uh, got home, got some dinner, hopped on the phone with you guys. So everything's good. Very cool, very cool. Now, what's been going on uh, with you and Kelvin Gasolum uh, talking shit with each other? Yeah, he's nothing. He's a dumb dumb. I mean. So Tyron beat him. Listen, first of all, the guy doesn't make weight by 10 pounds. I mean, for, who does that? Like, <laughs> no, that is that is ridiculous. Like, so ridiculous. I mean, in wrestling, like in, okay, in my world, in wrestling, where I come from, like, if you miss weight by 0. 0.2 pounds, everyone thinks you're an idiot. Like, 0. 0.2, not 10. Like, 10, that's like, no one's ever heard of that. That would be, like, the most weird thing that's ever happened in the world. But then Tyron broke his foot in the first round. Tyron beat him, and the guy's saying, like, he doesn't want to fight me. And it's just like, holy moly, dude, like, zip it. And then he tries using this lame line that a lot of these guys, no one knows who you are. And it's like, listen, despite the fact that you've been being pushed by the UFC marketing machine, you still have significantly less followers than me because you're uninteresting and nobody likes you. So you <laughs> shut up. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, I'm just looking at your record, Ben, and I had no idea you're 18 and all. I mean, that is very, very impressive. But with the greatest of respect, and I don't, I'm not trying to be an asshole here, you know, when I look That's at these right. names... That's kind of who you are, right? Yeah, well, of course it is, you know. <laughs> it, 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 I am what it says on the tin. Uh, but I look at these names, of course I recognize some of them, but they're not exactly household names in the UFC. What do you say to somebody that says, now you're going to face a big step up in competition? What is your response to that? Um, well, I, you know, well, number of, there's two things there. Obviously, number one, one of my main training partners is Tyron Woodley. He's number one in the division. So, obviously, I, I understand exactly how good the division is uh, because I train with the best guy in it. And then number two, I would say um, Andre Koreshkov and Douglas Lima, who I fought in Bellator, you know, they're really high-level guys. Koreshkov killed Benson Henderson, who was a UFC champion, who had lightweight, but he was ranked top 10 at welterweight. Um, and Douglas Lima had a war with Rory McDonald, who was ranked as high as number two for a long period of time. And so, you know, um, those guys, yep. those two in particular, are very tough opponents, and they've shown that against um, – would be former UFC guys, Benson Henderson, uh, Lorenz Larkin, and Douglas Lima. Well, you know what? To be fair, that is a perfect answer because as I said that to you, I was only looking at the top of the, the record. Of course, you got Shinya Aoki, but then there's some names that mm -hmm. I can't pronounce. But as but as you rightly pointed out, as you go down, you have got Koreshkov, you've got Carla Musa, you've got Douglas Lima, Jay Hiran, you know, so... I used to train with Koreshkov down at Ruka as well. And you're right, he, he is very, very good on the feet. You know, very, very talented fighter. So, yeah, I take that back, Ben. I take it back. Uh, yeah, Koreshkov's <laughs> good, you know. I, and I didn't get a lot of credit for that win because no one, you know, no one knew who he was at that time. And then, you know, after I beat him, he won another Bellator tournament. Then he beat Douglas Lima. And then he beat, I think he beat Lorenz Larkin. And then he killed Ben Henderson. So then, you know, then he got a lot of name recognition after that. But... At the time I beat him, he was kind of an unknown commodity. Um, so no one, no one gave me much credit. And, you know, Mike, in that fight, I outstruck him 248 to 1. <laughs> and the one strike he landed, I shot a double leg. And he happened to just so luckily land a knee as I was coming in. But I, I would argue that my face impacted his leg harder than his <laughs> leg impacted my face. Ben, so we'll just call it a, a shutout. Ben, ben you're just showing off now. You're just showing off. I'm sorry. They believe you, me fans. We don't appreciate, you know, pure arrogance. I mean, 248 to one. I mean, wheel it in Mike, a little bit, please. Mike, have you ever heard a stat like that, though? <laughs> Come on. That's a good stat. Hey, no, that, that is absolutely ridiculous. By the way, I have to step in. 
for a second and say Michael Bisping brings up stats like that four times a show. (laughs) He's like, just so you know, I have, uh, I have, uh, I'm the number one British fighter at avoiding takedowns in the UFC. Well, no, that sounds like my wife, Ben, because I'll say to her, I say, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm looking at the podcast charts. I'm like, and she's like, well, where are you? I'm like, I'm 24. She's like, what, uh, number 24? She's like, what, in all of them? I'm like, no, in sports and recreation in the UK about MMA, we're number 24. Ah, <laughs> uh, she, well, she keeps you honest. That's good. Yeah. Hell yeah. So look, I, I mean, you're talking shit with uh, Calvin, right? And you've ta- we talked about this before. You and Woodley are not going to fight each other anytime soon anyway. Yeah. Um, is there any interest in you possibly moving up to 185? Obviously, the big fight with Robbie Lawler coming up, UFC 235. But... You know, you you know, there's there's really no means to an end there. You want to become a UFC champion. Any interest in making that jump to 185 because Calvin spent most uh, of his career at welterweight? No, I I, I, I won't. So hey, there's a couple things. I I won't make that jump. I'm I'm really small for that weight class. You know, once that 155 is probably the ideal weight class. Man, I wrestled 153 at the international level in wrestling. Um, so 165 is probably actually ideal. I think there is a chance they make it. You know, obviously Dana's saying that ain't going to happen, but we don't always trust what he says. So, um, and then number two is, you know, listen, I haven't fought any of these dudes. There's a whole bunch of them I don't like. So, you know, I, I can like, I could, I could have a fighter I don't like every single month of 2019 and just knock them all out. I mean, I, I don't have to go anywhere. And then, you know, Tyron obviously made the last thing. Tyron made mention of moving to welterweight uh, once he defends the title two more times. So there's a lot of things that can happen there. Obviously, the MMA world's crazy. You never know. But I think I got plenty of fights at 170 that I want to go fight. You know what, Ben? I can't roll my eyes hard enough anytime, and I'm with the greatest of respect, that's my disclaimer. Anytime the welterweights talk about the fucking 165 pound division. 155 to 170, and you want one in between. From no, 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 no. You move 170 from, from, to 175. From 185 to 205 is a 20 pound fucking gap. There's no talk of a 195 division. <laughs> Fuck you. If you get a 165, I but want a 195. A, but good fighters at that weight class. No, I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, all right, listen. Robbie Lawler. Been around forever, former champion, as tough as they come. Good wrestling, uh, power in his hands. How do you see the fight going? Um, yeah, I, I, I think you described it pretty well. He's very good. Um, you know, I'm going to have to put the pressure on him. I'm going to have to put takedowns together. It's not going to be easy where I'm just going to one takedown and ch- choke him out. Um, I'm going to have to put some takedowns together and put the pressure on him. You know, he, he fights um, in a way that's like it's a very he, – he sprints and then he takes a break, and he sprints and he takes a break. And so I'm, I have to – fight at a constant pace, so I take those sprints away from him, um, dominate the top position, make him exhausted, and, and obviously don't let him land any big strength because he has he has a lot of power. And, you know, he has a, a loss to Tyron, but it was a big knockout loss. Um, do you do you plan on standing up with him at all, or is this pretty much you're going to go to the wrestling? Uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll start standing, of course. Uh, but, no, I'm, I'm going to do what I do best. I'll put pressure on him, and yeah, there's, there's obviously no guarantee I get a takedown right away, and so if we end up standing for a little bit, that's no big deal. I can do that. Um, but, you know, as far as me knocking him, Tyron Ty and I are completely different fighters. I, he has, I believe he has more knockdowns per strike thrown than anyone in, like, maybe anyone in the whole UFC, maybe anyone at welterweight. I don't remember exactly what the stat was. He, he's got big power. He knocks people down, um, and I just don't possess that ability. Now, I, I mean, obviously, you've been at, probably asked ad nauseum about the pressure coming up with your first UFC fight ever. Um, is, is it starting to get more real the closer you get to the fight? Is there any of that creeping in? Is there any, uh, a little bit, uh, maybe nerves creeping in? No, I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, that's one thing that struck me about you, Ben. I, um, I spent a little time with you in Milwaukee. I was talking about that recently. Um, yeah, l- listen, you know, a lot of guys like us, we always talk a big game, but, you know, you have the skills to back it up. And you, there is a, a a calm confidence about you that, that that isn't bullshit. You know, a lot of people talk shit, you know, but, but you, yeah. I, I can tell with you, it is the real deal. But 
Of course, your wrestling skill set is is fantastic. I mean, I, I obviously never wrestled you, but it's you know you're very decorated, and people say how tremendous you are. That aside, how would you rank yourself on the feet? If you if you had no choice, let's say something, uh, the ability to take somebody down was taken away from you in the fight. Are you, are you comfortable on your feet? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's an interesting question, right? Because we're not fighting a kickboxing match, mm. and so there's a whole whole bunch of factors in here. I mean, the biggest one that's in my favor is that I don't I don't have to worry about you taking me down. If you want to shoot on me, that I love it. Go ahead yeah. and do it. If you want to try to take me down, that's fantastic. I love it. Um, so I have zero care about you trying to take me down, and you always have to worry about me trying to take you down. And so yep. that, that's two factors right there that people don't consider. That it's a huge deal. And then number two is you're always worried about space, you know, you being my opponent, are always worried about space, and I'm not really too worried about space. Yeah. Once you get close enough to hit me, I'm close enough to grab you and take you down. So, again, you're always you're always worried about that range. So I think, you know, if we're talking, like, strictly, I'm just kind of kickbox, now that's a different story. If we just talk, I have to stand up in MMA, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch more pieces of that puzzle, which, which um, you know, the wrestling does affect Right, because if I get you down, you're not down for like ten seconds. You're probably down for the entire round, and so you're really having to hold back on everything that you would like to throw. You can't throw all of that stuff. Yeah, no. Listen, one hundred percent. I'm always trying to explain this to people how difficult it is to fight somebody that is just trying to take you down uh, or not only just trying to take you down but has the real threat of taking you down because then sometimes they end up beating yeah. you in the stand up because you're so concerned with the threat of the takedown you forget about the hands then you're waiting for a shot you get caught with the right hand or so on and so forth and as you said about the space you back up a little bit you see that I'm close to the fence. You shoot in. I try and sprawl. You push me up against the fence. Now you switch into singles to doubles all day long. So fighting people like you is a fucking pain in the ass, Ben. It really is. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad I'm retired. I mean, do you guys remember when Chael Sonnen knocked, knocked down Harrison Silva? Like, for God's sake, who thought? I mean, if they haven't fight a kickboxing match, that ain't going down like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nobody saw that happening. Um, ben. This is sort of almost, uh, you know, maybe a, a gag at this point. I don't even know. But uh, it's been a sort of public knowledge that you and Dana White have not been best of friends. Have you guys spoken yet? It's been a while. <laughs> no, no. We no? Jeez. No. Not, 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 <laughs> even, not, not even one text. <laughs> I reached out to him by text right away a couple times, and it was kind of like, just blew me off. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, but but I will say this though, Ben, not, not that I'm like, you know, having Dana's back. You did go at him pretty hard back in the day, which which I do respect. It's fine. It, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, in a weird way, look, if, you know, you, you got the call, you got the contract eventually, so obviously no regrets there. You did it sort of your way. I would say that you are probably the most notorious um you know, guy or, or fighter that has had not been signed to the UFC, and you're probably the guy with the biggest target on his back. Um, not because you're, you know, uh, not not anything about your personality or anything like that, but you're the most accredited fighter to come in, being undefeated. Um, I, I think that you're. It's a weird position to be in. Um, do you think it's partially a bit though? Like with Dana, or do you think it's real? Because part I look at like Dana White and his relationship with Errol Hawani, and I see their back and forth at every press conference, and I'm like, ah, this is sort of a bit. It's not real anger or real hatred. Do you think? You, a, think, you think it's a bit? I don't think Errol and Dana like each other. No, like, I, yeah, like I disagree other. with Lewis there, Ben. I don't think it's a bit at all. I I saw them at three different press conferences oh, yeah. do the same exact written exchange yes. where he would say something and then he'd be like, that's a dumb question. Next thing. And yeah, it was, yeah. No, you're right. Get a laugh. The same way comedians get a laugh in a comedy club. For it was sure. crazy. Absolutely. You know, there was a little bit of that, but then after a while, they pissed each other off. Just like you pissed me off at times. I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to fucking break this motherfucker's neck. Hey, Ben, switching gears. You're coming over from one FC. Of course, You've been around the UFC, you know, you're, you're in multiple fighters training camps. So, you know, um, you know, how, you know, you know what to expect with the UFC. What yep. can you tell us? I mean, I've never fought out in Asia. Uh, I've never, you know, I've never fought out there. What can you tell myself and the listeners? What what differences there will be? Or, or, or is there any differences? 
I mean, for me, I try I try to make every competition the exact same, right? If there's two people watching me, or if there's twenty thousand people watching me, that doesn't matter. I try to go. It, it's not really about that, right? And a lot of people who compete unsuccessfully, they think about all those other things that don't really matter. How many people are watching him? How big the other guy's muscles are? What kind of shit he does? And it really doesn't matter. Like I'm gonna try to get in the cage. I'm gonna come put my hands on you. If I get my hands on you, I'm probably gonna beat you. And so I, you know, I try to keep it that literally that simple. Um, so, you know, I've been through this between wrestling my whole life, the NCAA championships, the Olympics, all my fights. I've been through it all. I, I try to, I try to keep it as simple as possible. All right, Ben, we're going to let you go here in just a couple minutes. Uh, I wanted to ask you one cool. more thing. Um, obviously your boy is fighting, defending his title against Kamar Usman. Uh, how do you see that fight going down? Uh, I think Tyron, I think it's a pretty easy win for Tyron. Um, you know, Usman's a, a good wrestler who uses his wrestling a lot. That's like, you know, I think if you look at the RDA fight, it's like we kind of talked about it earlier with my striking is um, why was Usman, if they, Usman and, and um, RDA, if they fight a kickboxing match, it probably looks different. But because uh, RDA has to constantly worry about the takedown, now Usman's striking looks better. Well, Tyron. Tyron doesn't have to have that same worry. He's got such good hips. Even if you get into Tyron, that's just a part of the battle, and then you got to deal with his hips. Um, so I think Tyron doesn't worry too much about the takedown. I think he hits with a lot more power. I think he hits a lot more accurate. I think he has more diverse striking. Um, so I, I think he's got a bunch of advantages on his feet. I think he's going to touch old Marty up a little bit. You know, you just said something there that made me think of something, and this isn't me trying to be disrespectful to Tyron or to anybody else that's shorter than me. But, <laughs> but no, no, I'm serious though, but do you think being shorter gives you an advantage? Because it, it, I, I think so. In wrestling, a shorter guy, it's harder to get to the legs, the hips are stronger, the, the, their, their thighs, their, everything's thicker, you know what I'm saying? Do, do you think for a wrestler, sure. it's better to be a shorter guy? I, th- I think you play to your strengths. I think if a, in, right, it's, it's just like it's striking, Mike, right? If a, yeah. if a tall guy, uh, if he tries to fight on the inside, he's going to fight like shit. If a short guy tries to fight on the outside, he's going to fight like shit. you you gotta, you got to play to your strengths if you're short. You're on the inside. So in wrestling, um, you know, obviously there are, there are a handful of things. You know, shoulder guys are really more powerful. Uh, if they get into you, they, they can get up and through you a little faster. But um, guys who are longer and ranger, they're often better in scrambles. So mm-hmm. I, th- I think it's all about playing your strengths. I think you got to figure out what you do great, and you got to do that over and over and over again. Yep, yep, good point. All right, Ben, well, listen, we're going to let you go. Just finally, before we do, we are a humble show. We have a very, very humble following, but we're trying to grow. <laughs> and in order to grow, we need to make fucking headlines, okay, Ben? So we need a bold okay. prediction from you right now. We need it to be controversial. We need you to mean it, though. Maybe upset a few people and get us some uh, headlines on the on the Let's website. See. So they say, Ben okay, Ashford said that? on the Believe You Me podcast, duh, 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 over to you. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna make some. I'll just say something crazy so it makes headlines. How about that, Michael? Yeah, go I on. am going to beat Robbie Lawler on March second. George Masvidal is going to get hurt, and then I'm going to come over to London and kick Darren Till's ass two weeks later. Oh, like it, like it, like it. That's Masvidal good. Masvidal is an injury, a mysterious injury. Who knows what's going to happen? No threat there. No one. Probably going to hurt his vagina. <laughs> That's what I said. All right, listen, Ben, you are the man. Best of luck against Robbie Lawler. Thanks for joining us. That was awesome. Very cool. Thank you All very right, much, Ben. All right, buddy. Ben Askren, very intelligent, very uh, very measured, very funny. I like Ben a lot. I've always liked Ben a lot. Lewis, let's just take a quick second to hear from our uh, very good sponsor, Perform Asleep. That's right, Perform Asleep. You know the one. The Perform Asleep bed was designed by athletes to enhance recovery while you sleep. So... How did they do that? Well, it's very simple, Lewis. The Performer Sleep mattress is infused with copper cool technology. Copper cool is a combination of gel particles and microscopic copper particles infused throughout the foam to create cooler nights, give added support, blah, blah, blah. You know the one. You want the cool side of the pillow, Lewis. I hate being hot. I hate being sweaty. I hate being uncomfortable in bed. Sometimes I don't get a lot of time to sleep. When I do, I want to make the most of it. That's why my Performer Sleep mattress is so valued to me, Lewis. I truly yeah. value sleeping on this thing. It's incredible. And it also, look, it gives you the bounce that you want in a mattress as well with its uniquely designed Enozorb technology. 
technology, Enozorb, Enozorb. Uh, allows you to sleep on Enozorb. top of your mattress rather than sinking down Enozorb. into the mattress, which in results creates optimal support <laughs> and heat dissipation. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I sleep on this mattress every single night. Okay, and I'm a hot sleeper. I get very hot in the night. I kick Sweaty. the blankets off. If my girlfriend tries to Sexual. snuggle with me, I no, not sexually, it's bad. If she tries to snuggle with me, I, I don't want to say that I assault her, but I do things with my elbows and knees to get her away from me. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, I'm like you're actually making contact with me. Don't fucking Which touch I, me I, in I, the I, night. Because it's warm. I'll get hot. I'm like, I don't need your body heat on me. I will sweat. Well, guess what? But since I got the copper cool technology in my life, our relationship has gone through the roof. I We're love now snuggling. Happy. I'm like, hey, all day, every day, Enozorb. Come here, Enozorb. bitch. Get Let's over go. here. Let's go. Come over here. Let's you. make <laughs> babies. Oh, no, of course... We went off on a wild tangent now, but we're all kind of serious. We also offer a 100-night in-home risk-free trial. This allows you to test the mattress in your own home, in your sleep environment, rather than testing it for 15 minutes under a fluorescent light with some weird salesman standing above you. Let me say something. The lowest rung of salesman, and I mean this, and, I, and this isn't a joke here, This you, and you're keeping this in the read, Shannon. Don't edit Can this out. Can we clarify test? Test. Te no, test the mattress. Would you would clarify? Yeah, I mean, like, like, like. You can do whatever you want on this mattress. Anything? There's no cameras. And how in long your have you room. got until you send it back? 100 nights to do whatever you want. Any wow. stain on this mattress, guess what? They No questions asked. And you get your money back? Get your money back. Like, hey, and what is and that? if you use the promo code that, Believe, you would get a... Is that dried blood on the mattress? What is that? And if you use the promo code Believe, you get $150 off any size mattress? You get $150 off of any size mattress. Performersleep.com is the website. And if you use the promo code Believe? Believe is the promo code. $150 off of any size mattress, okay? This is a big deal, okay, guys? Right now, you're going to... In the next few months, you're going to buy a new mattress. Write down this code. Use the promo code BELIEVE. Go to performersleep.com and change the way you sleep. 